we're always taught by media, magazines, things we see, maybe our parents, that we need to be critical of this or that. And so being able to just be super laid back and have a lot of fun and a lot of conversation creates that level of trust, right? They could trust me to guide them, to let them know that they should move this way because that'll look beautiful. And trust is super important, right? And we're live today with the amazing Andrea. Hi. Hi. So to be here, Ninka. How are you today? I am thrilled to be on your podcast. So, so wonderful to be speaking with you and all the wonderful women out there. Yes. And we're thrilled to speak to you as well. I think we have too many topics to cover together, uh, but let's dive right in. So, you are a boudoir photographer. For the people that don't know what it is, what does that even mean? <laughs> I get that question a lot. So boudoir photography is technically defined as photographs of women of a central matter in lingerie. Mm. However, even though boudoir is technically from the French, the bedroom, mm. I believe that boudoir is a state of mind and it could be captured anywhere. So I photographed women, not just in their bedroom or various places in their home, but also outside, which has been incredible. Yeah. And what I find incredible is that every single of your pictures looks gorgeous. <laughs> Thank you. Seriously. Like, all yeah, beautiful. All women are completely different, but somehow you managed to make every woman look good. How do you even achieve that? So I start with the premise that all women are beautiful. I believe that and I want them all to believe that. And when I photograph, right, um, I always aim to find uh, the beauty that's inside of them and to bring it out forward. It could be something that they're passionate about. It could be their children, it could be travel. But oftentimes when we're photographing, we're either talking about um, a, a delicious cupcake and having <laughs> them envision that the one is just materializing or um, one of the prompts that I use that gets everybody beaming and looking fabulous is close your eyes and now imagine that you woke up this morning and there's an extra $500,000 in your account and it's yours. <laughs> wow. Mine from the inside. Um, and all I do is, is, is just capture that, capture that moment for them. Yeah, and that works because like I said, like all the pictures look really, really gorgeous. And I can imagine that, well, a lot of people are already nervous when they do a photography shoots but especially if you show a very intimate part of yourself, right? How yeah. does that work in practice? What, what do you, how do people approach you? Um, yeah, can you elaborate a little bit on that? Absolutely. So one of the biggest misconceptions, even from women a lot of times, is that boudoir photography is something that you do for your significant other. Mm -hmm. When, if you really dig down deeply, boudoir photography is something that women do for themselves. Yeah. At the end of the day, it's a gift to celebrate them. I call it a love letter to themselves love that they could always, right? They could always take out their, their photo album, their photos, and they see the beauty of them. Just it brings them back into that moment of confidence, of mm -hmm. power. And a lot of times when we strip away the things about ourselves, mm -hmm. that's when we're in most of our power. That's when we get our confidence and courage and can go forth. Like I was able to do this. I could do anything now. Yeah. And so many times women say that to me, right? They say, I take out my photo album when I'm feeling my day is low, when I'm depressed, when I don't think I'm looking so hot or whatever. And I remind myself that I'm awesome, <laughs> I'm totally sexy, that I am a goddess and I deserve more, which is the biggest thing. Because 
as women, we don't often believe that we deserve all these things about ourselves. Yeah, and we tell ourselves so many stories, right? About how we should look, about if we're beautiful, yes or no. Yeah, no. And so I want every woman to realize the beauty of their now, right? A lot of times people will say, um, I want to wait two, three, six months until I lose X amount of pounds or I go to the gym. And I always let them know that I want them to see the beauty in there now. Yeah. Not only can I do more with, you know, good lighting and stretching positions, you know, whatever, than they could do on their own at the gym and with a personal trainer and dieting. I know because I do all those things and I know it's like, it's a very slow process, Mm -hmm. but the whole idea is that you don't want to work towards a version of yourself. That's not truly you that might not be attainable or something that you could hold on. Right. Yeah. A lot of women look at those pictures and be like, Oh, I need to look like that again. Exactly. You want to look exactly that exactly because then it makes them feel bad again like oh I don't look like that oh I can never look like that oh that was so long ago no it should be I am gorgeous in all of my curves I am gorgeous in my lack of curves I am gorgeous tall I am gorgeous short I am gorgeous every and any which way and it's that sexiness and confidence and that smile that oozes out that's eternal Right. And so they could relate to that over time. So it's even when you also have such beautiful, like post parking pictures as well. Yes. So the other thing, so um, to take you a little bit back when I decided to go uh, on my photography journey for real, because I had been, <laughs> I love how you say for real. <laughs> I had been photographing forever, but I never went to school for photography. And so I never saw myself as being a photographer for real. I was how we put labels on ourselves, right? Like I love photography, but I'm not a real photographer. Yes. Um, So when I started photographing for real, I had left my corporate job where I actually was pushed out six and a half months pregnant with my second child, got laid off. I called my husband and he said, this is actually great news you get to do the thing that you were saying you wanted to do. Um, I used to, I used to be on the subway and I used to see right above me. I don't remember who said the quote, but you're never too old to do what you were meant to be. Right. Or something like that. And it just kept calling to me, but that little boy <laughs> my head, you're not a real photographer. And so um, I became uh, a doula. And I started photographing my uh, doula clients. So for anyone out there who doesn't know what a doula is, a doula is a birth coach. And so I would meet with the women and photograph their pregnant bellies. I photographed some births. I photograph women um, after they gave birth. And uh, I love, I love the, the pregnant body that's just gorgeous and ripe with possibility. And I also know from being a mom that I think it's a little bit of a myth. Maybe some women love being pregnant, right? That glow and whatever. But the reality is your body is stretching every which way. Everything is bothering you. You are not feeling oftentimes as sexy as you, you know, envisioned yourself when you created that thing inside of you, your baby. And so it's amazing to photograph pregnant women and give them their sexy back. Cause that is just like such a gift, right? To feel. I can totally imagine as well that you having that experience, like being there in those vulnerable moments, like how more vulnerable can you be like during birth, right? (laughs) And it's almost like the most vulnerable that it gets that um, you can make people feel very comfortable whatever the circumstances are and that you know so much about like all insights around the pregnancy and the recovery uh, after the pregnancy that that even adds more to your photography yeah knowing the function the functional side of (laughs) the pregnancy and then also a very graphical display with pictures and photography 
Yeah, you mentioned this before when you were saying um, about women being nervous and, and being vulnerable. And mm -hmm. that's so very true because, you know, first about the nervousness, all women are, are nervous, right? You're, anytime you're revealing yourself, whether emotionally, in this case, emotionally and physically, you're going to be nervous. Yeah. I've never met anyone who was like, let's do this right so um it all becomes a conversation where uh, i meet with them virtually before covid it used to be in person mm -hmm. and we talk about tons of things kind of like we're doing now like friends like what do you hope to accomplish with these photos what are the things that you hope to see um what are the highlights that you love about your body and what are the things that you want to hide or, or minimize, right? And so, nobody feels perfectly happy with their body, right? Right, no, nobody does. And, and you would think like, oh, you know, she's this way or that way, she must feel amazing. And that's not true at all. I meet women of all shapes and sizes and colors and ages too, which is important to mention. Mm -hmm. And um, there's always something that they don't love that other women would die for, right? <laughs> Whether it's like boobs or legs this way or, you know, hips that way or blah, blah, blah. You know, we were always taught by media, magazines, things we see, maybe our parents, that we need to be critical of this or that. And so it's ingrained, even if we don't think that it is, it is. Mm -hmm. And being able to just be super laid back and have a lot of fun and a lot of conversation creates that level of trust, right? They could trust me to guide them, to let them know that they should move this way because that'll look beautiful. And trust is super important, right? And trust goes both ways mm -hmm. because they also know to trust me that I will never show their photos unless they give me permission. Yeah. They've given themselves permission to be seen this way and be seen beautiful. They need to give me permission to share or not share their photos or even the information that they've done these photos. Yeah. So during... Yeah. Now, yeah, because you mentioned the permission part, I'm just very curious, like how many of your clients are actually saying like, yeah, sure, like <laughs> you can share my pictures. So I have, um, I have a private Facebook VIP group. Mm -hmm. Um, for clients and potential clients and for empowering women. Sometimes they'll say, you could share my photos in there. Mm -hmm. Sometimes uh, they'll say you could share, you know, this photo and this photo, but not the rest of them. It's very rare that I have the client who is like, yes, you could share these photos and they're stunningly gorgeous. And I wish that they would, but I understand the stigma around a woman and her body, even a woman's body that is not shown in a seductive way, mm -hmm. that people are saying that that's wrong, right? It's wrong to do that. It's wrong. It's wrong to be a doctor, a lawyer, you know, dentist, whatever, and also have a sexy side. Well, guess yeah. what? We're women. We all have a sexy side. Right. You know, we wouldn't propagate the rest of humanity if that sexy side wasn't there. And yes, we could do all of that. You know, there have been women who have become prime ministers or whatever, who've shown their sexy side. But here in the United States and lots of places in the world, it, you know, women don't feel like they could get ahead in their careers or, you know, in their in their spiritual group or whatever it might be if mm -hmm. those folks come out. Yeah. And uh, on the other hand, of course, like you said, it's also about trust and uh, people making their own decisions, right? Like I can also imagine that even if there wouldn't be a stigma or taboo, that then uh, still some people would be like, well, this is more something I did for Probably. me. Or right. something I did for my partner, so nobody else needs to see that. And that's also absolutely a thousand, a thousand, a thousand, a thousand percent that. Yeah. Going back to what we said, women are doing it for themselves. Mm -hmm. And so whatever you're doing for yourself, you may not want the rest of the world. So there's the layers, right? The layers of why. And there's so many layers of why. And I understand them and respect them all. Privacy is absolutely huge. Yeah. And going back to doing it for themselves, I'm getting, and I love this, lots of women who are turning not just 40, but 50 and 60, who say things like, um, I was a tomboy all of my life and I'm just coming into my own. Or I've never seen myself as beautiful. 
beautiful and I really want to celebrate me. And again, they might not even have uh, someone that they're going to be like, oh, I'm going to share these with my granddaughter. No, this is like that thing again, the yeah. belt out anytime they want to feel powerful empowered and gorgeous and be like yeah that's me <laughs> yeah and i can totally imagine that like also what you mentioned moments in life where you might feel a little bit more vulnerable and you just want to look at your beautiful side right like if it's uh, post breakup or divorce or uh, after having children or turning a certain age that you might feel insecure about because now i'm getting old oh what's old and what's young anyways uh, but like you said it's a love letter to yourself and looking at your pictures they all look like love letters <laughs> you're making me giggle <laughs> and I do that a lot when I photograph too I'm always giggling like like a school girl <laughs> which I think you know is one of the things that makes people feel comfortable I don't take myself way too seriously you know it's the kind of thing that you could definitely you know um come across as overpowering if you're like very serious about the whole thing. And I'm so, I'm, I'm, you know, silly. And then of course these poses, they're ridiculous. I mean, nobody does that in real life. You can't like- Thank you for saying that. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I always, I always train people like you need to stretch, you need to do like some hula hip exercises. We're going to do that when we meet because your back is going to hurt unless you're in the yoga studio, like three to five days a week. <laughs> These positions are going to make you crack up, but they're also going to crack your back. <laughs> so do you save the best for last just in case something goes cracking? <laughs> would be smart, <laughs> But no, it's like, I don't, I don't have, um, I don't have a set list. Mm -hmm. There's definitely um, positions that I know all women love. Yeah. Um, and I'll, and I'll try to capture that for every woman. If she's comfortable with that position, again, I always ask what they're okay with and not. Um, but yeah, no, it just comes like naturally, like, again, like how we're speaking right now, you know, the light here will be beautiful. And I'll say, okay, let's, this will look gorgeous by this light. Let's go there. And then things just unfold through like conversation. It's very spontaneous. Amazing. Yeah. And um, I love also how you found your own sweet spot because you've been through quite an interesting journey yourself, right? Like, could you take us back? <laughs> yeah, uh, like, even maybe back to Europe where uh, you were born. Like, <laughs> not to spend the, the next hour talking about, like, <laughs> your life in chronicle order, but just to get a little bit more of a taste of what was your life path, if we summarize it in a couple of minutes. Yeah, absolutely. So um, I was born in Romania, which was communist Romania. Mm -hmm. and uh, I came over to the United States when I was 10 years old. Um, I love photographing since I was little. Um, I love my dad photographing me, but I was so super nervous about being photographed by anybody else. Um, there's a story that I tell, and um, I did this TED style talk here in New York last year. Mm -hmm. And I talk about the story where I was with my grandpa in a very famous park, and I was really little, about three years old. And you know, we're having a moment and this moment, uh, this woman out of nowhere comes up and like, she just snaps a photo of me. She tells me to smile and I just freeze. And it wasn't the first time it had happened, but that was that moment that was very pivotal where like, I became so vulnerable anytime I saw a camera up in front of me, you know, but my dad would always um, photograph me and I always look beautiful in his photos and he inspired, you know, my whole philosophy of if you see somebody with love through a lens of love, then they will always be beautiful because you're capturing that beauty that you see. So become a solid gold dancer, though I think that was over by now. <laughs> um, and, and photograph for National Geographic. Oh, yeah, because you love traveling as well, right? I love traveling. And that would have been like perfect to marry the two. Um, but being, um, you know, an immigrant, the big vision was go to an Ivy League college and get an Ivy League education. And it'll was it your vision? No, 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 no. <laughs> this was my parents' vision. Um, I, I just had to get into the college and I did. Um, I got into Barnard, Columbia here in New York. Congratulations. And, um, Are your parents happy? 
Right. Like trying to, you know, be the A student, follow all the, the steps. But while I was there, I was already rebelling. So I was taking for uh, my double major in psychology. And they're like, what are you doing? And when I said I want to take photography too, they're like, no, this is where we draw the line. You, you could do that on your own time. And so what do you do with comparative English literature, you know, with a feminist background and psychology? you go into advertising. So, so I went into advertising um, where I work like a dog and I wasn't, I wasn't very happy, always dreaming and envisioning a path for myself. Um, we had a client who was a B2B client in the financial um, industry. They were creating platforms for traders on Wall Street. Mm -hmm. And it was in a time where everything was fabulous in New York, lots of parties, especially in media, you know, like really decadent type of things. And I would photograph their parties. I had some spreads uh, published in uh, Trader Magazine, and I still didn't think I was a photographer. And then um, I left advertising for a hot minute to have a catering um, company, which you know, I became pregnant and I had to go back to, uh, to the corporate world. And then I had my baby. That's why I went and I would post the photos on the wall and I got hired to do a baby shower. I did, I photographed the wedding. I did all these things that said, you're a photographer. And that's when I would light up, but still you didn't go to photography school. You're not a photographer. And then, you know, my mom on the other shoulder, what are you going to do with photography type of thing? Right. That's amazing, right? Because you already have so many customers and they just come to you because they love what they see. Like how much more proof do you need? It I don't know. I think a lot of it had to do with when I worked in advertising, all of the people in advertising had gone to ad school mm -hmm. and it was almost like, well, you can't do that because you didn't go to ad school. And I hadn't gone to ad school, right? I just went to my, <laughs> my Ivy league, whatever. Uh, but I wasn't at school. And so like, you know, remember what I said, the little messages that get ingrained subconsciously mm -hmm. that you don't even realize that kind of hold you back from who you're meant to be mm -hmm. it was like that and so there was the social proof but just not you know so um again when when I did get laid off uh six and a half months pregnant yeah, which that is was so incredible it, like that was just like the that was the kick in the butt that I needed for the thing that I already knew yeah. and I started um photographing full-time I incorporated my business and all of that at 41 and so you're never too old to do that thing of course it's so much better if you do it sooner because yeah. there's so much joy in living your passion yeah you know then couldn't agree more with you there and, right? and also I think it's very important like you said to have a partner that fully encourages you right that you're like honey I have some news I got laid off and we're six and a half months pregnant and he's like woohoo <laughs> that's the best news ever <laughs> well um, so now you can finally start making use of your talents I think that we complement each other really, really well. We both have that wanderlust inside of us. We want to see the world, um, that entrepreneurial spirit, that feeling like we can't really work for anybody else to make their passions and dreams and bank accounts come true. Yeah. And, uh, you know, he, he's a total feminist. He's totally fine with carrying the babies, making the meals, you know, supporting me, you know, and cheering me on like, yes, you, you can do this. Yes, you got this. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to say allows me my space because I'm not the kind of person to let other people allow me to do anything. Um, I think just just um, creates the opportunity for me to be able to be myself and live my passion and be excited for me, which I think is important. Yeah. And very early when you started being a real photographer, you even <laughs> started winning some amazing prizes and getting featured in very well-known uh, magazines, etc. Could you elaborate on that? <laughs> um, so when I first started on my photography journey, I was featured um, actually in a one day show at the Louvre. They had picked uh, people from all over the world um, and only a few were selected to participate. And I was chosen in two categories, in the portrait category, in the body category. And it was of a gorgeous pregnant woman who was 
you know, just in her bra and a skirt and her big pregnant belly with the New York City outlined in the back of her. And that was so fantastic. I have goosebumps just thinking about it. Of course, I wanted to fly to the Louvre, you know, to be part of the show. And I'm sorry that I wasn't actually in there in person to see it. But yeah, so that was the biggest. That's amazing. I mean, in one category is already incredible, let alone in two. Yeah, um, I fell in love with photographing my daughter. She's been my muse. And she's the kind of soul that just kind of, again, comes from the inside out and through her eyes. And this was a totally soulful portrait, almost crying of this like really beautiful child. Oftentimes, you know, uh, we as parents want our kids to smile for the camera. I love capturing all that is raw, right? That just comes from the inside. And that moment was such magic. It was so deep. And it ended up being shown at the Louvre. So that's really kind of exciting. That's amazing. Yeah, that's extremely exciting. <laughs> and one of the things that I also love about you is that despite your, your fears, you always try out new stuff. Like you, you briefly mentioned like doing a TED style talk. Uh, but I think that's also worth talking about. Like, how did you get into that? What happened? So I'm, I'm super fortunate. I'm part of, a, of an international networking group called BNI mm -hmm. and this incredible human being, he calls himself a story doula, Eduardo Placer. He um, helps women create a TED style talk in a very brief period of time. So on a, on a Sunday, you get together and then by Thursday evening, you're delivering your speech and your speech is some story that helps shape you or maybe some story that has affected your life in a profound sort of way. And so last year, I had been working with him to photograph his women, but I also had this amazing opportunity between him and his partner, Deborah Driscoll, to um, sit with them and craft not one but two TED style talks. Um, I, I was in, in drama and in high school. Um, but since then, speaking to other people, especially publicly, I get really nervous and really scared. Well, and my first is, of bed than even dying, right? So I think that's something very cool. <laughs> <laughs> right. And my ideas, like most people, were all over the place, right? You have a story, but it's not, it's everywhere and nowhere really. Mm -hmm. And what was so beautiful and incredible about working with um, Eduardo and, and Deborah, um, the story doulas, is that they took those pieces and really quickly helped me compress it into these messages that I knew were inside of me that I could deliver out onto the world. And I'm standing on the stage and I'm literally terrified. And so I just pushed through that, right? And audience is everything. So if you hear the laughter, of course you can't really see anyone because the lights are blinding mm -hmm. and your fear is blinding but pushing through that, right? Like so many other things that I've done that I could think of is incredible. Um, I think I was telling you earlier when we were chatting briefly that it's not a lack of fear that makes you brave. It's pushing through that fear and coming to the other side. And that's, that's my- It's so beautiful. Yeah, and that's a lot of my clients too. Like they're afraid to do this thing that they really want to do, but they're afraid. But when they push through that fear and come to the other side, then they can do anything. And I felt that way too, like standing up on that stage afterwards, I was beaming. I was like, I can do anything now. <laughs> so, like, I think that a year before that, I would have never seeked out this opportunity to speak to you. I would have been way too nervous. I don't think I, I could have I could have done it. And that's amazing, right? Because by taking those steps and going through your vulnerability and achieving the results, it opens up new doors for other new opportunity. I, I, I couldn't agree more. It's like the law of attraction, mm. right? You bring those things to you that you're putting out into the world. And the fact that we need to understand that it's okay to be vulnerable, mm -hmm. that in our vulnerability is where we find our power. Yeah. And that's so true in so many like aspects of our life. Like we always want to be strong and especially as women, you know, be strong, put a strong front. And that's not really true. It's, it's mm -hmm. when you allow yourself to be vulnerable that you could be a complete human being and you have so much more 
to get from life and also to offer to others. Yeah, and uh, the way I see it, it's also they're not opposites of each other, right? Exactly, right? Like love and hate are on the same coin. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And, you know, vulnerability and that vulnerability that I have in front of the camera, you know, to be photographed myself, I always bring that with me. Yeah. And so when I'm photographing someone, I understand what it's like to be on the other side. Mm -hmm. Like You know, it's that empathy and that love that you bring to it, right? You want to care for that person and you want to make them feel like it's okay to be vulnerable. I'm here mm -hmm. and we're going to do this. And so I'm also a cheerleader, like, yes, you got this. You look amazing, which is true. You're incredible. Go get it, girl. And that's like, not just for the photographs, but any, any point in life. I, I love supporting other women and making sure that their vulnerability and their power, you know, are out there in the world and they succeed in things that they're passionate about. Oh yeah, totally. And um, to be honest, I think also that's one of the biggest strengths that you have to create such a successful business because your business was booming, right? Just before the pandemic. Yeah, last year was my best year in business. And I, I took a, a trip to Thailand. Uh, I stayed for three weeks, which if you're an American, you understand what that means, allowing yourself to go for three weeks. That means you're not working in advertising anymore. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, it was it was this dream to go back to Thailand and spend all of this time and see, you know, I had this glorious vacation, things were ramping up, I was working with the fearless communicators again, you know, jobs were coming in. And then COVID happened. Mm -hmm. I got sick. My family got sick. It mm -hmm. took us a while. Then things with Black Lives Matter and social justice um, were happening here. And I hope they continue to happen in a way that they create real change. But while it was all so intense and raw, it felt really disingenuous to talk about my business and try to get clients and advertise mm -hmm. because I was healing. And there were so many other things that were way more important. Yeah. But the truth about business, right, and being a person in business, an entrepreneur, is that if you're not constantly advertising, marketing, networking, doing all the things, spinning all the little wheels, then it's very easy for things to unravel. Yeah. And so it went to a screeching halt. And now it's like picking up a little bit, a little bit, and hopefully, you know, it will more soon. But definitely covid took a toll like I'm sure it did in Europe uh, you know just like here yeah I just well. feel that in the states there are so many more things like we haven't even touched on the elections and let's not talk about politics except that everybody should go out there and vote uh, <laughs> that so many things happening at the same time that's the thing that's really really overwhelming I think is that you know you're we're in some really, truly unprecedented times with this virus that's, you know, sweeping everywhere and the fear and the disinformation and misinformation, you know, about it. And then the real death that's happening. And then, you know, these social movements that have been on the back burner for way too long. And, mm -hmm. you know, it's crazy to say it's 2020. And we still need to have these kinds of conversations. It's almost like we're in the 1960s. It's almost like we're in the 1860s, oh, yeah. you know, and, and they're not just here. They're obviously all over the world and they're so super important. Yeah. Um, and then you are having, of course, politics, mm -hmm. which of course they're a part of the social movement too, right? Mm -hmm. And it's a lot mentally and emotionally and physically, you know, for everybody to bear, Yeah, like on a personal level. Yeah, and um, I think a lot of people can relate to what you're saying as well. Like, okay, so you're an entrepreneur, but you're also a person and you got COVID yourself. You're recovering from that. You have children <laughs> and a partner that get COVID. So you're also a caretaker. Then there's also an emotional side to you with so many things happening at the same time. So I can totally imagine that you're like, okay, well, am I going to send out this like, promo let's do a fun shoot <laughs> that you're like uh is this the right timing and also does it feel good with myself right like is this what I want to be doing right now and how I want to promote my business right so now that I can I have this is how I wow yeah. that's the most glamorous face mask I've seen 
Um, so um, I got this in Vegas. It, it, it was the best part about Vegas, this face mask. <laughs> um, yeah, so I, you know, I show up, I always make sure that, you know, again, communication is key. If my clients aren't feeling well, they need to inform me because my hair and makeup artist you know, he needs to know he's doing the same. I mean, he's wearing a mask, but he's also cleaning his instruments and everything the same way as before, but they also need to be cognizant. And so there's that extra layer, but we're able to continue like this, even though I have to tell you, it's so hard breathing through a mask that's then fogging up the lens. And you're like, I think I see you <laughs> constantly like wiping it down. But if it allows me to continue my business, listen, I didn't, I didn't photograph for five months. And when I went on that, like first shoot, it felt like I'm alive. Like, it feels good to be alive. There's a great reason to be alive, you know, so. And I think that aliveness wasn't just you, also your customers, they were like, yes. <laughs> right? Oh, yeah. It's totally oh. pandemic. We're also doing we're building something again. We're making memories again and not just be like, okay, what happened in 2020? Well, I don't remember, <laughs> except for that I was stuck at home. The other thing that I want to say, and it's kind of morbid, but it's kind of true, is that mm -hmm. anytime that we're confronted with our own mortality, yeah. right? Even if it's not happening to us, but it's around us, we always want to feel alive. And for many of us, that means feeling sexy. <laughs> like It really does like feeling sexy, making love, things that affirm life, <laughs> like things that make you feel good to be alive. Of course, there's also ice cream. <laughs> <laughs> of which I just had way too much of during the pandemic. But that's okay. I won't beat myself up over the little joy of feeling alive, um, you know, and, and eating away my, my sadness and dulce de leche haagen -Dazs. That's okay. I'm, I'm not trying to give a commercial to haagen <laughs> I think a lot of us can relate to the ice cream part. <laughs> Well, it feels good, you yeah. know, a little, a little sweetness. It just makes the day brighter when other things can't happen. No, and it all goes back as well to what you were saying before, right? Like, don't limit yourself to, okay, I love myself when I have that number on my skill or when I have that number in my bank account or when I have that civil status in my life. Like, no, you never know what's going to happen tomorrow. Like, you were working at this high fly advertising corporate job and you were pregnant and then you got fired right so <laughs> we all get thrown curveballs in life we we all do and 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 that is so true you know for all the people who want to put things off i always say tomorrow is never promised yeah we never know what it's going to bring give yourself joy now accept yourself as you are now mm -hmm. don't beat yourself up enjoy the ice cream, go have fun, go be sexy, because you never know, you never know about tomorrow, you know, and then you said numbers in, in, in the bank account, you know, that that's meaningless. It's the things that bring you joy that you could think back on much later in life that are going to be worth, right? Yeah. Worth not the numbers in your bank account, because if it's just sitting there and not making anybody happy, then really what is, what is life worth? You know, just a bunch of, a bunch of stuff, you know, like travel, like you and I love to do experience mm. and, and, and invest in yourself, yeah. invest in a boudoir photo shoot, uh, invest in, uh, you know, lessons that make you happy and, and invest in that winery tour or that cooking class, right? Because at the end of the day, if you're not investing in yourself, again, what's that money in the bank account worth? Yeah. And that also makes me curious. Like you said, I didn't, photog uh, I didn't uh, photograph for five months. So how did you make use uh, of the time after everybody was recovered? How did I make use of, of the time? Yeah. 
Uh, you mean while in those five months, you mean? Yeah, because you said you got sick and then your family got sick. Yes. I assume it didn't, or I hope it didn't last five months. So what else have you been doing to feel good, to make the most out of it um, during this uh, crazy situation that we're in right now? Um, for me, going into nature is always where I find uh, my center. Mm -hmm. And so we did a lot of walks um, in the woods. New York City was on lockdown from every perspective. Mm -hmm. And, you know, getting sunshine and joy with a mask on is, is not my idea of fun. So we went to the woods, uh, we went to the ocean, and I actually planned this fantastic trip. We did five national parks in wow. two <laughs> yes um it was like super super cheap to fly and i felt confident that you know we wouldn't get sick we took every precaution so we flew to la and uh we did northern california yosemite came down the coast and we did all of that so lucky right before the fires mm -hmm. talking about tomorrow is never promised we got to yeah. see all this and about not things going on at the same time <laughs> yeah this like like raw gorgeous beauty that we just saw the redwoods and everything on fire right it was like on in our path crazy um we did um bryce and zion in utah which are just incredible places went down to sedona which is a heaven i felt so um incredible and spiritual to be there um and then we did a really cool trip on route 66 coming from Arizona all the way into California and just seeing like that piece of America you know from the past that we love so much the 50s diners and getting milkshakes <laughs> no more sweets. Yeah, ice cream yes. <laughs> yes more ice cream nothing like a good old-fashioned milkshake at a diner that's been around since the 50s that all the movie stars you know frequented um and getting like a uh, barbecue like the kind from like a small house that like I you need to stop because you're making me hungry <laughs> <laughs> well we did a ton of hiking and we did a ton of walking we walked in zion through um a water canyon and it was almost eight hours round trip just walking you know waiting at some parts like almost up to the armpits in the river for the most magnificent view so you need to eat really well <laughs> after something like that <laughs> and that's what I love about uh, a lot of entrepreneurs, right? Like it doesn't matter what life throws at you. You always try to make the most. It's like, okay, well, I don't have a repeat clients right now because so many things going on, uh, circumstances don't allow me. Yeah, let's plan that trip and <laughs> take advantage that not that many people are traveling right now. And then let's be back at the moment that your business starts picking up again and be fully into your business as soon as it starts picking up. I, I couldn't have said that better. I, I really couldn't have. And, and it's so important to take that time, right? For yourself to do whatever it is that recharges you so that you can be fully present in yourself, in your business, in your life. You know, I hate that cliche. I hate cliches, but it's so true. You know, when life throws you lemons, you make delicious lemonade, maybe throw in some mint, rose water. Or make margaritas. <laughs> yes. I like the frozen raspberry margaritas. Those are amazing. Or the passion fruit. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah, and I think you're such an example of that, to be honest. An example of... Of making the most out of the situations. Like, how many people would really get stuck in the victim role? Uh, sorry that I go back to it again, but getting fired while being pregnant from a jo job that probably it wasn't 9 to 5, right? Like, it was more like 9 to... Yeah, whenever. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then like while being so vulnerable and pregnant and they're like okay well you figure things out for yourself uh and i think a lot of people could have or maybe not say a lot of people but it would have been easy to get stuck in victimhood there instead of just pushing through and not launching your own business i think that you know being an immigrant i came here as a political refugee i left behind a life where i was happy in romania i was a child you know i didn't know to come here to start from scratch 
And then, you know, people don't really move around in Romania, but here we moved three times in three years to find your place, you know? And so you constantly, you know, have to feel more like I'm a survivor. I can do this. You need to motivate yourself to get over it and get on as it were, you know, to look at the holes that you've fallen into and how can you get back up? Because otherwise, um, you know, it's so easy for everybody to be a victim. So many people allow themselves that mentality. There's people, you know, I've seen very close to me and it's not a life that's filled with joy. Mm -hmm. It becomes a life that's always um, looking back. It's a life that's lived with fear. Mm-hmm. And, and I was the fearless girl. I was such a tomboy. I was climbing trees and like getting into all kinds of crazy situations that I don't want my kids to know about. Um, <laughs> Let's not tell them. <laughs> because I always wanted to, to experience life and see, and see what else is out there. How high can I go? You mm-hmm. know, when we were in Thailand, we were um, in Krabi. This is a little crazy. And there's apparently this gorgeous view from Riley Beach that I had read all about and seen the videos but you have to climb and they make it look so easy oh you just have this rope so not am I only alone I'm with my kids right who are you know 10 and 12 but whatnot and it's just a rope and this red dirt and you gotta hold on for dear life and make sure that your foot is going the same we had never done that and so not just being fearless for myself but also being fearless on behalf of them and showing them like it's okay if you You've never done it. It's okay if it's a little scary because the view from the top, it is truly magnificent. And no video can tell you and make you feel what you feel when you've accomplished that scary climb and gotten to the top. I mean, and you're like 20, yes. 20 pounds as we talk about this. <laughs> I'm so glad I did it. I will never do it again. I want to go back to Riley Beach, but I will never do that climb again. Once is enough. I know I did it, but I want to throw myself out of an airplane. Once will probably be enough. I'll probably never do it again. Yeah, but I love how you keep, it doesn't matter if it's your private life or if it's your professional life, you always uh, find new challenges for yourself, right? And yeah, they scare you, but you don't let that stop you. I think that that's what fires uh, most entrepreneurs. I think that that's the fabric that we're built on. I think that it, it takes a different kind of bird. And I've always been like, I think that's built into the fabric of our being, that lust for more, that lust to experience something that's out of the norm, to create a path for Mm -hmm. ourselves, to push our boundaries, because really to be an entrepreneur is constantly pushing your boundaries, right? Like going past all the fears, going across roads that maybe lots of people have never traveled on and and forging your own path. Um, And so lots of people have that inside of them, Mm -hmm. but it's probably that voice that I had, no, you can't, no, you can't, or there are all these reasons why you shouldn't. Mm -hmm. And I think that if they were to stoke, you know, the fire to fuel it, to like breathe some life into it, then we would have a lot more people living a life of passion and fulfillment, right? Than just being the worker bees um, that, you know, society teaches us to be, right? Just just be the worker bee, be that worker ant, just create the little paths. Mm. So what would you say to all worker bees that know that they have that entrepreneur inside? but they haven't taken the lead then. Start with just one thing, but just do it. If you see or hear that voice, if you see that sign on the subway, you're never too old, just do it. You know, like I said, I didn't believe that I was. And for me to be a real photographer meant I knew how to take my camera, no matter how fancy or not, from automatic into manual. And I asked so many people to show me, I didn't understand. And so I said, okay, today is the day I am going to book my five hour lesson. I went to this little but brilliant five hour photography class that taught me the insides and outs. Everything made sense. Yeah. And then everything that I loved, I used for inspiration. I would, I would learn from this person. I would buy that course. I would invest in that thing and pull it all together to make it mine. It wasn't overnight. You can't think like, okay, it's overnight, yeah. but you're never going to get anywhere if you don't take that first step yeah. forward. And that first step forward can 
won't be anything. Just take that class, try it out. Because maybe that dream that you had isn't really it. It could be something else. Yeah. You can't really stop yourself. You might say, mm-hmm. I want to be this and then find out that, okay, maybe that's not it. But maybe you wanted to be an entrepreneur yeah. and maybe your entrepreneurial dream can be something else that you never thought. But you have to move out of the pattern of acceptable road to, oh, look, let's check out what's over there on this winding road. And that's me on every road trip ever. <laughs> it's like, GPS is like, you need to go this way on the highway. And I'm like, hmm, that looked interesting over there. <laughs> we were driving. Let's take the exit and see where that gets us. Yeah. Um, and so you have to do that. You, you just have to do that one, uh, one little step forward. Amazing. Yeah. And to wrap up, because you've gifted us so many beautiful quotes inspiration insights and thank you so much for sharing your own experience with us today i'm very curious what is your definition of fortune because i always say to people and that's even the slogan of my company like you can create your own fortune but what does fortune mean to you I think that to me, fortune means exactly what we were just talking about in the last few minutes, right? Creating your own path and living bravely, right? Stepping out of that zone into the unknown so that you can experience life to the fullest. To me, that's fortune. And I'm so fortunate that I've listened to that little voice (laughs) despite everything else, because yes, of course, money is important. Abundance, um, health is the most important thing in everything, because if you don't have that, really have nothing, but everything else you can create, but it starts with that first step, stepping out of your fear and just living bravely. That's fortune to me. Yeah, beautiful. <laughs> Thank so you. So for everybody that's like, okay, well, my first step is that I'm gonna book a shoot with her. <laughs> yes. Where can people find you? Uh, yeah, so they can go to my website, andreabballon.com, Andrea with two E's, because I'm Romanian and special like that. <laughs> Um, on uh, social media, on Instagram, uh, Facebook, um, Pinterest, it's at Andrea B. Ballon Photography. And then of course, on Facebook, they could find my beautifully brazen VIP uh, group for Andrea B. Ballon Photography. And that's for all women and not just prospective clients and past clients, but all women who want to feel empowered um, and start on their day with just joy and fun. Amazing. Well, for everybody that was like, this was way too fast and way too much to keep up with don't worry wherever you're watching this or listening to this we'll make sure that we'll also uh, uh, give a list of all the places where you can be found so don't worry (laughs) thank you thank you again so much for this interview it's been an incredible experience getting to know you and talking to you today thank you thank you so much it's such a pleasure you do an incredible thing talking to women and empowering entrepreneurs Yes, and that's how we rise, by lifting each other up, right? Absolutely. So I wish you a very empowered day. You're a bit uh, uh, behind (laughs) in New York, so you still have uh, more to make out of today. So um, I hope you have a great day. And also to everybody that has been listening and watching, make it a very empowered day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. 